Um, we mostly deal with embeddable devices and how to get data in a natural way. Uh, we also deal with how to take devices and enhance your body. Um, so mostly my group, uh, which is called Grindhouse Wetware, uh, we're just kind of a little hobby shop and anything we can get our hands on that we can do to tweak our performance or mess around with our biochemistry or uh, implant something, uh, that's basically what we try to do. Um, and they call it biohacking. And it is artsy farts. You bet. So, what is grinding? Um, implanting a small piece of hardware uh, that can interact with an environment uh, such as uh, RFID. You implant that in you, um, that's a small, easy thing that you can do. You can program it to react to your environment, enhance your daily life, automate the world. Um, also, making small genetic changes to your supporting biology. These are things like the bacterium in your stomach, uh, where you can take yogurt and change the genetics of the bacteria in there, and it actually can elevate your mood. People have made antidepressant yogurt. And really, it's not the yogurt, it's the genetics of what's going on in your stomach and changing that sort of thing. So it's a, and it's a very easy thing to do. You can do this in your in your fridge. Um, implanting a small piece of hardware that can provide you with some sort of data from an external uh, source is is also grinding. And that's, uh, for example, uh, the finger magnet implants. I currently I have a finger magnet implant, and it's been it's been a really fun experience. Um, forcing any dramatic change in your biology and the way it functions uh, for advantage or purpose. This is, um, for example, one thing that we've been experimenting a lot with is a, a technology called TDCS. And this is transcranial direct current stimulation. And this is where you stimulate various portions of your brain with direct current at low amperage and uh, it causes various states. So sometimes you can um, you can activate your, for example, what we do a lot of is the uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. I'm glad I got that right. And that is basically this section uh, of your brain, and it's responsible for what working memory and um, focus and those sorts of things. What we did was we built a hat that actually stimulates your brain in this way uh, so that you can use it at any time. This does the prescribed 20 minute stimulation and it tapers up the voltage so that it's very gentle and then it tapers the voltage right off at the end of the 20 minute cycle. The effect, which is called a flow state, can last up to two hours from a 20 minute session. Uh, it works by increasing the potential firing rate of your neurons in that section of your brain. Um, also, any, any sort of change in, in the way you function for advantage or purpose is really grinding. Um, so, for example, like I just went over, uh, TDCS is one of the easy ones that you can do. It's considered extremely safe. We're talking about 2 milliamps of current um, at max. And to achieve any sort of effect, it only takes like 0.25 milliamps of direct current to achieve any effect. Um, it's really fun. Uh, you can mess around with your brain in your basement. Yes, sir. How does that compare with a TENS? Um, well, a TENS is, is normally used for muscles, I believe, and it's a pulsing hey. wave. There's also something called CES, which is kind of unproven. Uh, the wiki page has some information on it, but that's a square wave, which is similar to what TENS is. It's a square wave against your muscle tissue, CES is a square wave against your brain, and that's supposed to uh, enhance focus and, and th those sorts of things. Um, we haven't really tried too much of that, but it is one of the features we're talking about adding in some of the next models of uh, what we call thinking path. Um, uh, the magnetory organ, in other words, uh, implanting a magnet in your finger, um, which allows you to sense um, the electromagnetic spectrum, I suppose. Uh, all cell, uh, all bricks here uh, kick off a signal that you can feel. 
uh, pretty much any transformer, microwaves, live wires behind walls. I can feel that sort of stuff because of a small neodymium magnet that I had implanted in my finger. Um, we then went on to um, do some other interesting things with it because what makes what makes this interesting is that number one, it's passive, so you can be very surprised by the data that it can give you. You know, we'll be sitting there working in in my basement, and I'll go over the soldering iron, and I jump back, and it's just instinctive for me to jump back. I know it means high voltage. I know it means danger. And I didn't need to work that all out. It just naturally happened. It's a very analog thing. You get used to it and it becomes just a part of your daily data. And uh, that's what, what I want from biohacking. More data, more abilities, more awareness, more uh, sensation. Um, it's flexible because you can take it and, and uh, get data from a device from any sensor. And uh, one example of this I will show a little bit later. Um, I got involved from a talk by a fellow named Kevin Warwick. He's a really interesting guy. Um, I'll go more into him in the founders of, of the kind of thing that we're doing here, uh, portion of the talk. But um, there's also Left Ananem, who was from England. She did a talk at a hacker conference. She was the one who coined the term grinder. Um, now, other like-minded people kind of showed me other things that were being done, but what we found was that mostly in these communities, it was a lot of talking and a lot of kind of, wow, wouldn't it be nice? And, oh, we're going to have to get an ethics panel together. And, oh, man, we should, we should just really, really root for funding. And, you know, in these sorts of communities, that, that sort of thing is just ridiculous. You're never going to get funding from for this sort of thing unless you're in DARPA. And businesses, we, the makers of the world have a chance to kind of take on corporate interests, I would say, and kind of make their mark in places like this because we can do almost anything they can do. And the only thing they can't do is get through red tape. And I can get through red tape all day because the ethics panel is an ethics panel of one. I look at myself and I go, should I do this? And then I go, yes, I should totally do this. And then I do it. And that means that I can kind of push ahead where other institutions have to wait for approval. And uh, I tend to like that, that that part of it. And that part of it kind of dovetails into body modification. People in academia do not seem to like biohacking. They just don't seem to like it. They think that it's haughty, and they think that it's arrogant, and you guys should be more careful and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine, you know. Go back to Safe Town Square. I got stuff to do. So um, when it comes to how I feel about what what biohacking and what DIY um, is all about, it's about kind of fighting these, you know, when this technology comes to us, you know, we, we look at our, our cell phones. You know? They don't want you to jailbreak your cell phone that's attached to your hip. Right? How do you think they're going to feel when it's in your hip? Think they're going to feel any different? Probably not. You know? They're, they're not going to allow this technology to be open, in my opinion. And so the makers of the world have a chance to truly kind of take on that sort of structure. Uh, now, I'll go ahead and get off the crazy town now and uh, get on with the rest of the talk. That's my little soapbox, and I'll get off. Um, founders of the movement, Kevin Warwick. He's a professor of cybernetics, which is the coolest title in all of history ever held by anybody. Um, professor of cybernetics, the only one I've ever heard of. He's in uh, uh, Reading, England, and uh, he's done RFID plant work extremely early, he had some really cool stuff set up where he would walk in and the doors would open for him and good morning Kevin and the lights would turn on and nobody could log into his computer unless he was present in the room. A couple of other people have done that hack. I plan on putting an RFID tag in myself and using it to automate uh, some aspects of my home and, and things like that. I've already automated the lights in my home just by motion activation but I'd like to start moving on to some of the stuff where it's just, it's really detecting me. And then, 
back it up with a neural network so that it begins to learn my habits, maybe even starts to save me some money, things like that, um, where you start to integrate with your surroundings more. That's another thing that we're trying to do. These devices are everywhere. We're interacting with them, and we're doing it mostly by mashing at buttons like monkeys instead of it just being very natural and part of our universe. Um, uh, he also did some stuff with Utah arrays. You might have heard about this. It was he, he put an array of electrodes in his in, in, a, in a nerve trunk in his arm, and it, it had a hundred sensors, and it would read the, the what sounded essentially like noise, but it was the signal. And he was able to both read it, and he was able to pump into it. So it was a two-way trans. It was a transceiver, and so. One of the things that he did was uh, he set up a, a hand across the Atlantic through the internet, and he was able to move his hand, read the signal, pump that through the internet, and move a hand all the way across the Atlantic. Now, another more extreme experiment that he did, and this guy, I've seen several of his talks, and he is funny, and he is charming, but he must be the most silver-tongued devil on the planet. This guy talked his wife into getting an identical Utah array pounded into the trunk of her nerves in her arm just so that he could experiment with somebody that familiar to him. And what she did was she was able to move her hand and he was able to feel like a ghost of her hand within his own hand. I find that sort of thing amazing. Uh, you know, the, the beginnings of telepathy almost. I mean, just really really insane stuff that you, you, you don't hear about. Another thing I like about this guy is he's, he dares people to join him. At the end of his speeches, he's just like, go get an implant. Seriously, it's totally fun. Hey, if your doctor won't do it, find a piercer. They'll totally do it for you. No problem. Just do it. It's fine. You know, and uh, I think that that's how we should be. We should be daring with this stuff. We should, you know, the first guys who were experimenting with electricity... I mean, that's not very safe. I mean, that stuff was going like They were riding lightning, and then they were doing whatever the hell. They were hooking it up to corpses. They didn't care. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was, it was, a, it was a, the Wild West. And that's how it should be again. That's what citizen science should be about. Um, left end of them is the original grinder. Uh, she's crazy as hell. Uh, I, I don't... I, good from you, that's saying something. I know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> she um, is... Now, I just got done talking about being dangerous, but you should also, you know, use discretion. This girl talks about using vodka as, a, as an antiseptic and, like, using very unsterile tools in order to do very complex procedures, and when you screw up, it's like, ha uh -huh. okay, we're not quite that nihilistic, so, you know. Um, we find her to be terrifying. Okay, <laughs> crazy as hell. No, seriously. She's really freaking crazy. She thinks she hears voices. It's not good. Um, well, there you go. Uh, some early experiments that we've done and uh, kind of passed along to the community. This is an early version of what we call bottlenose. And uh, that's a rangefinder there um, attached to a relay, which is then attached to an um, electromagnet ring that we created and put around my finger. We then put it through a AT Mega 328 uh, microprocessor with just a little bit of code on it, um, basically saying, you know, hey, if it's close, vibrate a lot. If it's far away, vibrate a little. And uh, all through electromagnetism. So we wrapped the coil around my finger, and of course it was, you know, a dud. And then another dud. And then another dud. And then we figured out we needed a relay. And then we didn't want the relay, and then it was really hard. And Boy, it's all about just trying and trying and trying and pounding your head against those weird problems. Um, but that's the fun of it. Uh, it feels very similar to sonar. So as I would be passing the device over this, I would get a feel, and I could start in, in the map in my mind, the spatial map that I've got in my mind. You know, when you close your eyes and somebody speaks, you have an idea of where they are. You don't know what they look like. You know, uh, they're a blob. They're amorphous. Well, that's what this is like. You pass it over, and it's like each person gets to chirp out their voice, and you feel where they're at, and maybe roughly about their size. Uh, it's a pretty interesting feel, especially since the sensory organ is your finger. And so 
it's interesting to see how your mind immediately begins to map that to the appropriate place when you use it and you don't want to walk in the walls. Um, it's easy to change the sensor. We put an infrared sensor for sensing heat at a distance, and then we uh, changed up the signal to mimic um, biorhythmic, something familiar in biorhythmic, so we used a heartbeat. So basically when it was at freezing temperature, it was a heart in, um, I think in terms of endocardia? I don't know, it's the really slow beat. And uh, when it was um, at boiling or above, it would be tachycardic beating, like really, really fast. And so you'd point it at things, so we'd pass a cigarette in front of it, and you know, you put an ice cube. And you, you, you understand immediately. There's no confusion in your mind as to what these things mean. Fast heartbeats are dangerous. That's danger. And slow heartbeats, well, they can be equally dangerous, but in the opposite direction, and you know immediately how it feels. Um, with no need for uh, kind of remapping. Um, so, thinking cap, which, again, I showed here, um, it's concealable, which is kind of interesting, because I'll take this to work, and when I'm having a pain in the ass problem, and the guy next to me wants to keep talking, and He's saying something interesting, so I want to talk to him too. And you know, I just can't get into the problem. I'll plug this guy in, wear him for about 20 minutes. I come out of it about two hours later. I got a shitload of work done. It's nice. Um, it is easy to do yourself. Uh, we did it ourselves in about two hours. Um, it's open source, open hardware. All the plans are out there on the internet. All the codes out there. We'll show you exactly how to do it. It was a really fun and easy grind. Uh, not permanent, and no blood, which everybody, everybody loves no blood, right? Um, now, I'll see if I can get this video to play. This was acting a little wonky earlier, but this is a, a little piece of the time lapse of us building this, uh, 